Kia ora, good afternoon and welcome to News Hub Nation's live budget special. Last year we thought we had drama, Treasury leaks, hacking claims, New Zealand's first wellbeing budget. Well, today we have a budget written under the pressure of a global pandemic and a national lockdown. And with New Zealand's health and economy facing greater threats than we've ever seen before. So here to interpret the facts and figures and what they will mean for our daily lives and families are economist Shamabil Yakub from Sense Partners, thanks for coming, and Chief Economist at ANZ Bank, Sharon Sonner. Sharon, thanks for your time. These are our first in-studio guests since mid-March. Welcome to the programme, welcome to the studio. Sharon Bill, I'm going to start with you. What are you looking for in today's budget? Well, the biggest priority for me is how they're going to look after all those folk who are going to lose their jobs. Our welfare system really has to keep up to be able to look after all these people who are going to meet extreme financial stress. Right. Uh, and how many are you expecting? What are you expecting the unemployment rate to go to? How many job seekers? Finger in the air stuff. Who knows? <laughs> really? Right? I think the main thing is make sure that our welfare system is resilient enough to be able to look after these folk. Because the income drop can be somewhere between 25 and 80 percent. So their ability to pay their rates, their rents, their mortgages is really going to be compromised. So this is going to be way bigger than anything we have experienced in our recent history. OK, Sharon, let's go to you. What do you think are the top priorities should be? Well, the government clearly wants to keep people in jobs as much as possible, and that's a worthy goal, but there is a real trade-off. The economy needs to evolve and adapt to this new world we find ourselves in, and you can't hold it in stasis. So how are they going to reconcile those two things? And also, how are they going to not waste this crisis and get some stuff built at a reasonable cost? And a reasonable... We have to keep using. This pandemic has not finished. Its health and economic stories are still being told. We can be very proud of, as a country, of our health response, and it must go on. And now, we also have to put a team of five million to work on our economic... Lower income families. This budget must indeed be massive for you to be at a loss for words. Tover O'Brien, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> OK, well, look, we're back with our panel, economist Shamabil Yakub from Sense Partners and Sharon Zona, Chief Economist at ANZ. You have now had a quick look at the numbers. Uh, let's talk about, first of all, the economy. Shamabil, um, what does it tell us about the economy? What do the predictions tell us about the economy? Well, the predictions are... ...are going to grow, as we saw in the predicted unemployment figures there. Marama Davidson, welcome to the programme. Thanks for your time. Um, is there enough in this budget for beneficiaries? Oh, I'm really wrapped about uh, the housing and the extra 8,000 new homes that are going to be public and community houses. We're back on our Budget 2020 special with our panel, Shamabil Jakob and Sharon Azona. Uh, let's have a look at some extra uh, detail from the budget on infrastructure. Uh, so the infrastructure package, $3 billion on top of the $12 billion already announced in that New Zealand upgrade. That's uh, a, a, another big spend there, Shamabil. It is, but uh, the what stuff that's been announced so far is buying kit rather than stuff that's going to employ a whole lot of people. So right. the additional 2,000 projects... Challenging. Fun but challenging. OK, <laughs> we'll leave it there for the moment. Thanks to our panel. Uh, stay with us. We'll be back shortly when we speak to Finance Minister Grant Robertson and the Deputy Prime Minister, Winston Peters. So, yes, that's what we should do. OK. Build our own self-reliance. Build, our, build more autonomy into our economy, be less de dependent on other economies for our survival. All right, Deputy Prime Minister Winston Peters, thank you so much for your time. And that is all from us for now, but tune in to our 4.30 and 6pm bulletins for extended budget day coverage and visit newshub.co.nz for our budget at a glance and what it will mean for your finances. Thank you so much to our panel, Sharon Zolner from ANZ Bank, Bank sorry, and Shema Bill Jakob from Sense Partners. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in our usual time slot on 9.30 Saturday morning. See you then. This program was made with the assistance of the New Zealand On Air Platinum Fund.